Tony, how, how well are you guys playing defense right now over the last few weeks? Really well. Um, you know, the guys are taking the personal challenge on, you know, individually to not be the guy that breaks us down. When it's, it becomes that important to you individually to protect each other collectively, then you can become pretty good, especially with the pieces that we have, the length, um, the size, the physicality inside, the quickness on the perimeter. And then when you got a couple pit bulls at the top of your defense in Ashton and uh, Emmanuel, it makes it really hard for the other team. A couple of weeks ago, I think, or in the recent past, Cal said this was the worst defensive team he's had. I care to amend that. And uh, how much is something like that said for effect as opposed to be taken literally? Oh, no, it was 100% true now. We were, we were bad, uh, you know, through the first uh, seven, eight, nine games of the year. And it was just, you know, the young guys, um, you know, getting a feel for it at this level. Um, and then us collectively trusting each other defensively. And that just comes with uh, young teams like we have uh, every year. And it, like you see, the breakthrough usually happens late December, early January. We have that Christmas break. We can do a lot of practicing, a lot of film work. And then you see the guys grow and improve rapidly during that period. And that's what's happened again this year. I didn't guard against you know, going against Mississippi State after having already beaten them by you know, 21 points. Any worries that the young guys might overlook the game to a certain extent? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I've heard a couple times trap games and this and, and that. Not with this team. This team is focused. I mean, you see it, um, you see it every day in practice. You know, the, the practices are so competitive um, that you can't expect a letdown in the games. These guys are in practice are going after each other. They're competing against each other. They're having fun together. Um, and so it doesn't matter the opponent on the floor. They're, they're going to come to play every night. And when Mississippi State is playing well, what do they do well? They're, they're physical. They're as big and as physical as any team in the league. And then you've got the experience in the back backcourt with Peters and the Witherspoon brothers. and. Um, so they, they got all the dynamics to be a fantastic team. And then you see Reggie Perry, you know, kind of growing up before your eyes away. He's playing the last five games or so has really made them a, a potent team. Would you say you guys don't have the shot blocking like you normally have or would you that you would prefer? And how do you make up for that? We, we, we've got it in spots. Again, you see the emergence of, of EJ coming along and he's provided uh, some shot blocking. Nick is getting a better understanding for the timing of it. So those two guys are uh, are good shot blockers. Um, you got PJ with his length is a good shot blocker when he needs to be. And then Reed is the, the ultimate rim protector because he just does a great job with the vertical. We call it the vertical jump where he, you can be inside that circle as a secondary defender and as the driver comes at you, as big and as barrel chested as he is, and he jumps up vertical and, and chest that. The guy, the guy trying to lay the ball in, it, it's not a foul and it causes a lot of misses. So we, even though we don't, you know, blocking shots like Carl Towns, Anthony Davis, and those guys, we do have a significant amount of rim protectors in the paint. What about free throw shooting? Is that one of the things this team is really good at? Yeah, it's a good, you know, Cal said all year long, this is one of the best shooting teams that he's had. And you, you see that in our free throw shooting percentage. And, you know, you win a lot of games when you make 75, 80% of your free throws. How do you get the guys to buy into defense? Because I remember asking PJ, after, someone asked him, was defense fun? And he kind of smiled and said, well, almost as much fun as offense. Just like holding them accountable every single day. Um, you see it in practice, you know, with what coach does and what we do as assistants to hold them accountable, um, to teach them, to show them on film, the goods and the bads. Um, and then they, they'll grow from it. And then the, the experience of seeing, the, especially for the young guys, the multiple offenses all year long now, They're, they've gotten used now to college basketball and, and what, what they're going to see offensively that, you know, it's, it's with experience, you know, comes some success. Cal says that Nick is close, and, but that he keeps repeating the same things to him in practice. Does Nick believe in himself that he can get this done? Because confidence has been an issue with him in the past. Yeah, I think he, I think he does. He's, he's getting better and he's getting closer. You know, he has some mental breakdowns at time on the court where he'll He'll repeat the same mistakes and you know, we'll show him on tape and he's, he's gotten better at it. And so we just need him to get over that last hurdle. And uh, cause he's a big part of where we're trying to go. He, he provides this team something that, that we don't have. Following that Auburn win, Cal talked about the 10 or 11 plays on tape where you can let a team back in. How has that number changed? It's still 10 or 11 or is it, <laughs> is it shrunk any? Yeah, it, ha it has shrunk. 
it has shrunk. And, it, and again, it's you know sometimes it's playing through fatigue. When guys get tired late in games, you can have some mental errors and uh, subbing yourself early in the game and, and different things. But it, it's definitely improved. But again, it improves through practice. We do so many situations in, in, in practice. And then they've seen so many different situations in games now that they're getting used to playing in those moments. In the last game, Cal took Nick out. And then he started like almost dancing in front of him there at the bench. Well, what was the point he was get, trying to get across there? I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> what about catching state after a tough loss for them? You know, you know they're going to be desperate. I mean, they're as talented and as big and as physical and talented on the perimeter as any team in the league. And, that probably stung, giving that one away on their home court. And so, you know, it's it's going to be obviously a sold out arena like we face everywhere. And our guys are getting used to playing in those kind of environments on the road. So, you know, we're going to come out and give us give them our best. And I'm sure they're going to do the same uh, to us. Any other guys? Thanks, guys.